Very good morning, Mr Henare. Good morning, Lindsay. Now, you're fed up with the Liberal left and the righteous right. That must just about make you a libertarian. You should come <laughs> and join the staff here. <laughs> I could very well do that, uh, Lindsay. Look, yeah, I've just, I, I've basically had, a, had enough of, uh, you know, what I, what I consider uh, to be the Liberal left and the righteous right, telling other people what to do, basically, and especially in, in uh, the whole hypocrisy of it is that we have gambling in New Zealand anyway. And uh, that's, that's my major point. Is it a particular problem, though, for Māori on welfare? Oh, I don't think it's uh, any more of a problem or even less than a problem uh, than other, uh, other forms of gambling. Uh, what we have to do is make sure that there are structures in place so that if that does happen, that uh, you can really nip it in the bud straight away. The issue isn't actually which sort of gambling uh, uh, leads to uh, people spending their welfare checks. It's why. Um, and I... Like I said in the House last week, I mean, the only reason you and I and everybody else that, that has a flutter now and then is uh, uh, because they want to better themselves. They want want a couple of extra dollars in the bank. Well, we can't have that, can we? No, we can't have that, can we? I suppose we should remember also that the, the righteous right and the liberal left were the same people who said that uh, our family life would be totally destroyed when lotto uh, was legalised and casinos were legalised, but uh, the facts just haven't borne that out, have they? No, they haven't, and, and quite frankly the opposite has, um, has, has taken place, Lindsay, when you consider the, the millions of dollars that are poured back into the community from lotto. Um, you know, you, you just cannot argue that uh, the, the opening up of uh, people in New Zealand being able to bet on sports uh, is going to uh, lead to the wreck, wreck and ruin of this society. Is it just, though, that you're sick and tired of the righteous right and the liberals and so on that's making you take this stance, or are you carrying the torch, dare I ask this question, of freedom here, Tal, the right <laughs> to spend your own money as you see fit? Well, basically, I, I suppose it's a, uh, a combination of both of those things, Lindsay. I've, I've, I've never really considered myself politically correct. Um, it's just a... It, I think um, it's better to know your enemy up front rather than uh, to find out that the, either the Liberals or the Righteous Right are your enemy at, right at the end of the day, at the close of play. But, Tom, I find it very hard to reconcile all of this with your reported comments recently about the banning of smoking. You That's endorsed right. uh, what that idiot said about smoking being cultural genocide. Now, I mean, is that not politically correct? Is that not totalitarian? How do you square what you've just said about sports betting with what you said about smoking? Because I think, Lindsay, that, uh, that smoking in New Zealand actually creates and causes a lot of harm, not only in terms of the money we spend in, in trying to help those that uh, end up in hospital with uh, smoking related diseases um, it, it is a strain on our economy and quite frankly there are sometimes and, and only sometimes uh, people in New Zealand have to take a stand and whether that be the legislators or, or local government or, or individuals you have to take a stand to try and uh, get in there and, and cut, the tree before, cut the tree down before it uh, rots the whole place, rots, rots the whole forest my body, I can put in it what I choose, can't I? Oh, definitely, and that's why I said that um, as far as I was concerned in terms of tobacco, you could, you could ban the sale of uh, tobacco, but you couldn't ban people from growing it in their backyards. Well, then why ban the sale of it? Because it basically makes, uh, makes money out of uh, a, a basically a sickness and that at the end of the day, it's the community at large that has to pay for it well, that's in terms of a health system. Okay, but then change the health system. Make people who do this pick up the tab, and then you'd certainly see some individual responsibility well, being exercised. I mean, I don't have a, I don't have a problem with that. But, but, but you're using that as justification for a totalitarian measure. I mean, two wrongs don't make a right. Oh, I don't think it's uh, totalitarianism that, that you ban the sale of something that is harmful not only to those that do smoke, but, but that, those... That's their decision, to, on, on, It's on, their but, decision. Yeah, it, is, it certainly is their decision, but also you have, uh, you've got now that uh, the, the researchers and the scientists have, uh, you know, come out and said that uh, secondhand smoking, those that don't smoke are actually uh, 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 are getting sick through secondhand smoke. Uh, well, I could present you with a whole body of evidence that says that is an extremely dubious proposition, but we're actually here to talk about sports betting, aren't we? <laughs> uh, just just uh, quickly, what do you think the chances are of the legislation being passed? Well, I'm hopeful that it does pass because uh, there are a number of people in the House that uh, you know, think along the same lines as, uh, that I do, is that at the end of the day we have betting in the country now, so why not let it op open up to every, every part of our, uh, our lives in terms of sports betting? I mean, the amount of money that we spend overseas on betting, 
just ridiculous. All right, well, good luck with it. It sounds as though you've got some family commitments you'd better go and attend to back there. Thanks yeah, for they're, they're, they're the ones from the Liberal, liberal left. Oh, gosh. Well, I'll definitely let you go in that case. Thanks very much for your time this morning. Thank you, Lindsay. To Hanare, Deputy Leader of New Zealand First, and he takes time to a quarter to eight. It's New Zealand's most comprehensive... Nurturing Tall Poppies. Radio Liberty. Thirteen to eight, time to go to the soapbox. This morning, Ian Fraser, the A-team's Ian Fraser, not to be confused with a certain oily-headed broadcaster. Ian Fraser's subject is freedom on the internet. I was reading an article recently by a guy called Bill Fraser, co-founder of an organisation called Digital Liberty. His main idea is that the internet has got the potential to starve governments to death. Now that got me hooked. What could be better than watching governments starve? He was talking about what will happen when governments lose the ability to tax an increasingly elusive proportion of the population. The key to this eventuality is something known as anonymous digital cash, the ability to transact business on the internet in complete encrypted privacy using a form of invisible credit. Increasingly people will plug into the free economy that will grow on the net and their business dealings will become invisible and untraceable. This explains, of course, why Bill Clinton is so keen on the clipper chip. It's an attempt to provide government with a window so it can watch what people are doing on their computers. But it's a lost cause. Encryption software has already been released worldwide, enabling anyone to conduct their affairs in total privacy. The outcome of such an invisible and private currency will be that government won't be able to assess how much tax someone should be paying. They'll have no means of investigating the earnings and transactions of those who do business in this way. This, according to Bill Frizzer, will starve governments of revenue. They will be forced to downsize and will literally be outflanked and outsmarted by the emerging technology. In fact, such a private, invisible money system already exists. It's called World Trade Clearinghouse. Based in the States, this organization provides a fully backed gold currency system. You can lodge funds in your own account where they are converted into grams of gold. You can operate your account by proprietary encryption software and a modem. The account cannot be accessed by any government agency and all transactions between account holders are conducted in total privacy. Of course, your attitude to all this depends on how you view taxation. If, like me, you see taxation as the forced expropriation of your hard-earned property, then such news will have you dancing with glee. If, on the other hand, you see taxation as a duty you owe society, then you'll probably be very unhappy with the concept. But if you're one of those who live off the taxation paid by others, then you should probably be very scared indeed. What we're going to see is the emergence of a new breed of global citizen, smart, enterprising, influential and financially invisible to their respective national governments. And because there will be huge competitive advantages in transacting and doing business this way, more and more people will become cyber citizens and move their allegiance to the free global community. It's all starting to sound like the plot of Atlas Shrugged, where the able, the competent, the self-starters and the movers and shakers disappeared into a hidden community and withdrew their support from the society that constantly tried to enslave them. And the result, as anyone who has read Ayn Rand's novel knows, was the collapse of the cannibalistic welfare state. We could see fiction turning into reality. At some point in the near future, this exodus of producers into the free global community could reach critical mass and collapse national government structures. The state will be unable to remain financially solvent and will finally be exposed for what it has always been, the emperor with no clothes. So who is John Galt? Maybe the internet holds the answer. Ian Fraser on the soapbox. He'll be back there at a quarter to nine. You're in New Freeland with Lindsay Perigo. <laughs> Radio Liberty, not Radio Gaga. And now.